Hey, what I'd like to talk to you about right now is some critters that are around camp that want to have your food as much as you do. You've got mice in the canyon, you've got ringtail cats in the canyon, you've got ravens. All these critters want to have your food. The number one rule is that you've got to button everything up at night before you go to bed. If you don't do this, then you're going to have all these critters in your camp and around your camp, and they'll sit there and uh, be a real nuisance and uh, cause problems. The ravens are real tenacious because they can sit there, and lots of times I've been lazy and not want, wanting to go back down to the cooler and put a block of cheese away, and I'll put a bowl over it. Well, the ravens have figured out how to sit there and knock this bowl over and get right in there. They end up pecking through here, and it looks like Swiss cheese. So you really need to put everything away at night. Same thing with the lids of pots and stuff. You leave your pasta out thinking you'll deal with it the next morning. Well, guess what? Those ravens are tenacious enough to be able to get in there. The mice need about a quarter inch gap to get inside anything. So what you're going to need to do is make sure you close up all your trash. So when you get ready at night, you need to come over to your trash receptacle and you're going to basically, you don't have to button it completely up. You just kind of close the bag up, get the lid, and put it down on here. Just like that. Don't have to pop it on, but then that way you can have easy access to it the next morning. Okay, the animals haven't figured out how to open these boxes yet, but you know, one day soon they'll probably be like bears and they'll figure that out. So that's what you need to do with the traps every night. The ringtail cats are a small little raccoon type critter, has the little mask of a raccoon, the little black face, has black rings around its tail, big bushy tail. It's kind of a very long alley cat looking type thing, very small legs. When you come around around camp, if you leave food out, then this cat's going to start getting into stuff. All right? If you take uh, this food in your backpack with you, your day pack, to your uh, sleeping place, they will actually come up and start gnawing right through the nylon, and they're right there while you're sitting next to them. You'll get up and sit there and yell at them and throw a rock, and they'll go away. Five minutes later, they'll come back. They'll start doing the same thing. Then they'll go away for two minutes. Then you'll throw another rock. Then they'll come back, and they'll go away, away for a minute. And then before long, they're going to be on top of your sleeping bag, sitting there looking at you in the face saying, give me that candy bar, I really want to eat it. <laughs> okay, now that we've talked about the critters that want your food, we need to tell you about some other critters. And these are the critters that can harm you down here. And so what we're going to talk about right now is some red ants. These are real big and prevalent in here. Scorpions and rattlesnakes, okay? The red ants that are down here in the canyon just need to be aware of where you're going to be camping and where you're going to be setting up kitchen. Try to sit there and make sure you know where their ant holes are because um, these guys have an acid that's in their bite. When they bite you, it hurts like heck. And so there's not a whole lot you can do for it except go down to the river and put it in the cold water. I've heard of home remedies of some sort of bicarbonate soda and some charcoal or something like that. It's supposed to make these things a little less painful, but the only thing I can tell you about them is they're painful as heck. And uh, you just need to try to stay away from them. Usually if you uh, find an area that's clear of red ants, then at nighttime you won't have any problem with where you're camping as far as that goes. All right. The other critters that we need to talk about are the scorpions. Okay. Scorpions are real prevalent down in the canyon. What you need to know about the scorpions is that they're a nocturnal creature. They bury themselves in the sand. And you know, uh, for the most part, you know, they won't bother you. But, you know, you do need to, have to take some precautions. If you're sleeping out under the stars, what you need to do is lay your ground cloth down just before you go to bed at night. All right. And then, of course, your sleeping bag and all your other stuff in there. When you get up in the morning, you need to make sure that you uh, shake out your hatch, your shorts, your t-shirts, your tevas, whatever you have there. Scorpions can be as small as this, and they can be as big as that, um, and they got a pretty good sting on them. So, you know, you just need to know that if that happens, the best thing you can do is uh, take some Benadryl or something like that uh, to kind of... Uh, counteract the sting. So that's the thing about scorpions, but just shaking everything out and just being aware of where you are and putting your bed, uh, bed kit down um, will, uh, just before you go to bed, will be the best thing you can do to avoid them. The other creatures that we have, of course, are the rattlesnakes. Okay, and here in the last couple of years, we've had a rash of rattlesnake bites down in the Grand Canyon. Uh, number one reason for this rash of rattlesnake bites is uh, people playing with the rattlesnakes. So, main thing here is just leave the rattlesnakes alone. If you do get bit by them, it does mean an evacuation. The um, poison in the rattlesnakes will deteriorate your skin and cause chunks of meat to fall off. So you just need to get out of there as soon as possible. The best way to get out of there is with a ground air radio and that will go right into um, 
that right now is the uh, emergency procedures for evacuation.